We're going to talk about spiritual gifts, gifts given by God to us by his Holy Spirit. All right. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is because I want to share with you how important it is for born again Christians to have the Holy Spirit working in their lives. Sometimes with some denominations, some, some um, beliefs, we don't need the Holy Spirit. But oh my goodness, the Holy Spirit is our second set of eyes, our second set of ears. Ah, okay, we won't even go into all that right now. But my issue is there are lives that could be saved if we as churches would encourage the gifts of the Holy Spirit to operate in the church. And I don't mean through the pastor and through the leaders, the elders and the deacons. and the, I'm talking about through the membership, the church body. Okay? So what I'm saying is this is why we so need the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit working in our lives. I remember one night I left the house. And I felt in my spirit that my father was going to fall. And I had no way of getting back. I had no transportation. So I prayed that and had everybody that I was with pray with me that he would be okay and that he would not either not get hurt and also not be afraid while he was waiting for me to get home to get him up. And I'm telling you, when I got home, my father was on the floor, had fallen between two beds. My bed was on one wall. His bed was on the other because I took care of him. But I had to make a run. So here he was on the floor, and here was the biggest miracle. Not only was he not hurt or bumped at all, he also wasn't afraid. Well, I said, I asked him, I said, well, Pop, weren't you afraid? I mean, did you get nervous? No, I was fine. I was laid here listening to the TV. I knew you were going to be home in a minute. So I say that to say, when, what if I hadn't prayed? What if we hadn't said a prayer because I hadn't picked up the signal? Because I wasn't taught in my church that the Holy Spirit does all that. What if I didn't even expect that? Or the thought passed my mind and I said, oh, girl, you're tripping. Okay, I'm done <laughs> running my mouth. Now we're going to read scripture because I can go on and on about that. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting at verse 1. Listen, please don't, don't move now. This is more important than anything I said. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are diversities of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit, the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, divers, which means different, kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But all these 
worketh one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Okay? For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members are that one body, being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink of the one spirit or into the one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not of the hand, or I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many, many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of thee. You Baptists, quit telling the Catholics you have no need. You Episcopalians, quit telling the 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 uh, uh, the four square you have no need of thee. All y'all need each other. You Seventh Day Adventists, you quit telling the whole body of Christ you have no need of them because they worship on Sunday. All y'all need to quit and get up off your high horse. Okay, let me continue reading. This is more important than my two cents. Okay. Now, nay, this is verse 22. Much more, these members of the body, which seem to be more feeble, are necessary. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need like a thumb. But God has tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. Have you ever tried to hold a cup without the thumb? <coughs> you try to hold a cup without a thumb. That's a mess. The thumb is not the prettiest finger on the hand. But I tell you what, that thumb makes that whole hand function because that's where your leverage is. Okay, moving right along. That Now, this is it. Verse 25. That there should be no schism in the body. That's why denominationalism is a pain. That's me. Okay, let me repeat the word. But that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care, one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Okay? Now, ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God has set some in church, first, apostles, secondarily, prophets, thirdly, teachers, after that, miracles, then gifts of healings, healings, plural. Variety of gifts of healings, inner, outer, all kind. Helps, governments, diversities, a variety of tongues. All, no, question, verse 29. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Well, that's a rhetorical question. Heck no. Okay, let me keep reading. Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Heck no. That's me throwing in that little, you know, finishing feeling to that, uh, to those questions. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. And that's when it goes into 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter. That is the more excellent way, love. But we're dealing with gifts right now. 
So listen, I want to share with you just a few little quickies so that you'll understand just how the Holy Spirit works. A few videos ago, and you'll see it on 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 YouTube or on uh, God's Remnant um, online church. I talked about how God protected me from a dog that I didn't even know was there in the middle of the night. And had I crossed over on its turf, its property, I would have been dead meat. That dog was glaring at me like something that, I mean, he looked like a demon. He looked that evil and mean, and he was not out to play. So I say that to say the Holy Spirit serves all kind of purposes. I have been attacked by demons in my home, and I rebuked, and, and I mean, the Holy Spirit helped me see that bad boy. And when it came toward me, and it pounced on me and pinned me down. It was using the name of, of Jesus that got rid of it. But I tell you this, if you don't have the gifts of the Holy Spirit working in you, you can fall prey to things seen and unseen because you don't even know what you're dealing with. Some of you don't even know that you're dealing with anything. So you think you're dealing with a person like if you're taking care of an old person, the Holy Spirit has to show you that the reason they get mean for no reason at all is because there's a demon manipulating them to wear you out. If you don't discern it, you get mad at them. But if you know what's happening, you rebuke that sucker and that behavior stops. I saw that in my own father. It stopped. Okay? So what I'm telling you is for, you, for your life support, we need the Holy Spirit. Ask him to fill you in Jesus' name. God bless you.